The reaction with the means deserve a whole new page and a whole new video for them. And I have a ketone in here. Aldehydes and ketones react the same way with the amines. And the important thing about amines is how many hydrogens do I have attached to the nitrogen? So if you happen to have two or three hydrogens, like in the case of ammonia. So two or three hydrogens are going to give you the imine because we're going to eliminate water and I need at least two hydrogens to form the H2O. If you have the two hydrogens on the nitrogen, we're going to take them out. All right, so ammonia. Ammonia has three. I need two of them to make H2O. And what happens when you have the right number of nitrogens is that we're not going to move the double bond. The double bond is going to stay in place. I'm going to take the two hydrogens, two hydrogens on the nitrogen and the oxygen to make water. And I'm going to basically replace the oxygen with the nitrogen and the third group the nitrogen had attached to it. In the case of ammonia, the third group is a hydrogen. And this right here is an imine. And the imine is when you have the carbon-nitrogen double bond. The reaction with aniline, again, we count immediately how many hydrogens are attached to the nitrogen. I have two. That means I'm not moving the double bond. So go ahead and draw the backbone of your ketone. Put the double bond in there without the oxygen. And we're going to take those two hydrogens off. We're going to attach the nitrogen with the third group it had attached to it. In this case, I have a benzene ring. So this is the imine that I get when I react with aniline. Now, it doesn't matter what the third group is. It can be a phenyl, it can be a hydrogen, it can be an OH, maybe another nitrogen. So when you see this, this is hydroxamine. And we are going to, again, take the two hydrogens off. We're going to form water with them. So go ahead and make the backbone of your ketone or your aldehyde minus the oxygen. And we put the nitrogen right here. It has a second, uh, I'm sorry, it has an OH attached to it. It's okay, don't worry, just put it there. And when you have a nitrogen attached to an OH and you put it to form your imine, we, we call it a different name, we call it an oxime here. Oxime, oxime. So we're going to see then whenever we actually do the different types of uh, I means they also have different names. This molecule right here, notice I have an ether at the top. Ethers don't react. I have a nitrogen, and how many hydrogens are attached to my nitrogen? I only have one. So if I have one, I am going to have to get a second hydrogen somewhere to form water. And this is when you form an enamine. So when your nitrogen has only one hydrogen, we are going to shift the double bond towards one of the alpha carbons. The alpha carbons are the carbons that are directly attached to the carbonyl, so those are my alpha carbons. So when your nitrogen has one hydrogen, the double bond is going to be between the carbon of the carbonyl and one of the alpha carbons. In this particular case, the alpha carbon on the left is the same as the alpha carbon on the right, they're equivalent. So we don't have to worry so much. So go ahead and draw the five carbon uh, chain. We are still going to put the nitrogen where the oxygen was, but this time around the double bond is going to shift between the carbon of the carbonyl and the alpha carbon. And this right here is an alkene, so it's an ene. And it has an amine attached to it. So this is what we call an enamine. So enamines have a carbon-carbon double bond. Let's do that again. This time again with diphenylamine. 
Notice that I have two phenyl rings, two benzene rings attached to my nitrogen, but what's important is counting the number of hydrogens. I only have one hydrogen, so I know that I'm going to get a double bond between the carbons. I'm going to still attach my nitrogen where the oxygen used to be, and I can do the double bond to the left or I can do it to the right. It's equivalent in this case, so it doesn't make a difference. So I get again another anamine. So when you're reacting with amines, the important thing is counting the number of hydrogens on your nitrogen. If you have two, like we have in this uh, three examples right here, the double bond is going to stay where the carbonyl had it. Take the oxygen off, substitute it with the nitrogen. If your nitrogen has only one hydrogen, the double bond is going to shift in between the carbon of the carbonyl and one of the alpha carbons. That's it.